There was always a sense of it not being quite right. There felt there was something that didn't feel quite right about people being on blow up beds, um, rotating every single night and having to find a new venue, not having anywhere for them to store their belongings during the day. Um, also it being often quite a male dominated environment and how that was for our female guests was um, yeah, quite kind of challenging. For me, there was always a sense that actually having a static shelter is a better option. Um, I think it's, you know, not just from a kind of COVID point and public health point of view, but also from that kind of uh, best practice um, point of view of just, you know, really providing that stability, the consistency um, and the kind of dignity um, that, that having a static shelter does. I think that also having a building means that we are able to provide um, a lot more support because people are actually on site, we're not moving around the whole time um, and we're able to really think about how it is that we're, you know, not just putting a roof over somebody's head but really thinking about how is it that we break the cycle of homelessness and I think that, that we're able to do much more effectively from a static shelter. I think it's a complete game changer been so powerful for our guests to be able to come into this space not just have their own place with their own little walls around them but to be able to leave their possessions in one place when they go out into the day and when they leave the shelter. When volunteers come um, and they're asking where something is uh, you really notice that guests actually completely have kind of ownership over this space and that they are actually much more familiar with the building than volunteers, which was very different to the kind of previous model where people would typically be in their own churches and know that space very well. Because when you're street homeless, um, you've no foundations whatsoever. You, everything is a, is a real challenge. You know, there's no direction when you're out on the streets, you're just wandering around, your mental health is shot. You might be suffering from addictions. Just to have a safe place to come is really important. So we had a huge dorm downstairs in the basement and we had sort of camp beds, 14 of them, 14 male beds and two female beds. We've now changed with the funding to the self-contained units, which has just transformed the way that we can help people. So they can then take pride in their own space and look after their bedding, look after their room, somewhere warm, somewhere comfortable to sleep. So that was a huge help and we were guided throughout by Housing Justice so they were absolutely fantastic in their support. And then I'd heard before that it was all together, like everyone stayed together, like in one, one big room. And then when I got here, it was completely different than going downstairs to show me my own separate room. Literally five years I've been trying to get somewhere. Been here, I was here two months and then they found me somewhere and I'm living in shared accommodation now, but it's my independence. Jesus says, if you see someone who's hungry or naked or, and I would add, without a home, you're seeing me and what are you going to do about it? I do think you've got to start with a vision. I think you have to have an idea. And then I think it's a case of just going for it. What they've done for me is stop me from actually being six foot under.